Hey everyone, it's Brandy, and you're watching Abstract Crafter, and we are back today for part two, and I'm hoping that we'll actually finish. I'll be kind of bummed if we don't, so for the sake of trying to speed things up, I pulled all the colors, or at least as many as I could, so I'll only have to dig through the one pile instead of all of the others. So I have every, I should have everything ready. I have some things to talk about. We're not doing any up... Well, there is some updates, but I can talk about those as we as we color. And we're not going to be doing shoutouts or obsessions because this is a part two. So I figure that we already got that in yesterday's video. So let me get sit it. <laughs> Let me get sat down, get seated, gosh, and we'll get started. And if you didn't see yesterday's video, you should go watch it, first of all. Or at least the beginning, yeah, it's probably closer to the middle. <laughs> um, we are going to be, we're making labels so you guys can kind of see my process as to how I do things for my you know, bigger projects. I've kind of started straying away from really making a lot of labels, but on my own just <laughs> because I, I started getting bigger projects with more colors, so it would take a lot longer, but I ran out of ink from my giveaway, which is, which is okay, which is okay. Uh, it's no problem. I don't mind doing this. I quite like it. It's just a way for me to be creative in a way. So it's, it's fine. So once we get started, I'll get into some things. I am, have a couple things to like share with you guys. I have, um, I guess we can do that first. I wanted to show you as I was talking about mandalas, or mandalas, whatever you guys call them. I call them mandalas. And I wanted to show you the first ones I ever drew. Whoa. <sighs> Let me grab the book. Just because it was on my mind. Oh my gosh, I'm dropping them. I'm throwing them all about. So, let me zoom out. So, I do wreck this journal as a art journal, which isn't a very popular, well I mean it's kind of popular, but it's not super popular. A lot of people that do this the way you're supposed to by destroying it don't really like when people do it this way, but I figure I'm still wrecking it. You're still doing things to this that you shouldn't be doing. So let's see if I can find it. There it is. I see it. And I haven't finished with this, but this was a prompt to color the entire page. And so I thought I'd, and they're all laminated so that I wouldn't ruin the pages. See, it had already bled. And my cat's already over there stealing another one. Um, and the colors have already faded quite a bit. This one was done mostly with color pencil and some fine liners. And then the second one I ever did I have marked... And that was this one, and the prompt was, sleep with the journal, describe the experience here. Well, I did sleep with it, but and then I picked this, because this is some of my favorite song lyrics. I find it kind of funny. I find it kind of sad. The dream, dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had it's from Mad World. I know it from Gary Jules, but... So this was the second one I ever did, and I really like it. I like the colors. I was really proud of this one. My mandalas are really simple uh, because I like simple. You know, I could probably do complicated, but then I tend to be, I tend to overanalyze. So these are the next one. This, I actually went and bought like just one of those little $2 sketchbooks. I know I have a bad shadow. Let's, there we go. So this was the first one I ever did that was just all pen. And then my, this one I'm still working on, I actually guess I forgot about it. And you can see how rough it is here. When I actually go in and color, 
I, I'll start adding more and more details, but these are just like my very simple ones and like you can kind of see some of the detail a little bit better when I go up close. Uh, there's just something I like to do. I don't get super, you know, like I said, I like simple. I like simplistic designs on my mandalas. I like the complicated ones. I just don't do them myself very much. So that was the only thing I really had for show and tell. So let's zoom back in. Ooh, there we go. My perfect number. We'll shut that flashlight off so that we can focus. So, there. Uh, I think that was all I really wanted to show you guys. So, let's get going on this. And then, because it actually has been a couple days, I made a little checklist. I just roughly wrote the numbers and made a quick checklist to make sure I don't mix up because I know I had went out of order a little bit. But apparently I didn't get out of order too terribly bad. So, we left off with the number 30, because I'm going backwards. It's just, I don't know why it's easier for me to go backwards. So, number 30, the dark blue color. And then, I also told you guys a little bit about uh, this book. So, if I end up needing it, I marked all the pages that I wrote. They're just, like, really short. Some are a page long, but most of them are half pages. So I figured I could read you what I wrote, and then I could expand on it if it needed expanding on. So that'll be off to the side for now. Oh, gross. I don't know what that is. And I kind of want to just kind of um, touch on the... Uh, you know what I had explained to you guys about becoming affiliated with Diamond Art Club and I just wanted you guys to know that my feelings are exactly that I didn't over exaggerate them or anything like that they don't pay for reviews they never will as far as I know they would never pay for a good review and they actually encourage us if you know we come across problems to be completely honest because they feel, like I do, that you can't learn anything from people just basically giving you a good review for the sake of giving you a good review. So, knowing that, it's a huge comfort too. And, of course, if I run into any problems, even though this particular picture was a gift, and I will insert it here again, even though it was in the thumbnail... So even though this particular, this painting was a gift, and I said I wouldn't criticize it, I won't. But if I come into problems, I can, you know, let you guys know as well as let them know without being critical. So I just wanted to, you know, make that kind of clear because I didn't in the other one. I just, you know, kind of talked about how much I am infatuated with this company and I didn't really give the proper disclaimer. So just know that. And then also my coupon code, it doesn't expire. I, as long as I'm an affiliate, I get that coupon code. And if you didn't see yesterday's and you want to go buy something from Diamond Art Club, um, and you want to save 15%, just use the code Abstract Crafter, no spaces, and it is not case sensitive. So anybody can use that code anytime they want. And then this is a white symbol, so we're just going to uh, wait for it to dry. And go on to the next one. Oh. Okay, it's the greens. I was like, oh no, I already messed up. <laughs> I didn't even pay attention to my own order. So, I was, I want to tell you guys about something that happened the other day. That was one of the scariest things that could ever happen in a mother's life. So... I'll tell you the story, and then I'll tell you the conclusion. So you might guess while I'm telling you the story what the conclusion might be. So just, just hang tight, because I will get there. <laughs> so my husband and I decided to make dinner the other day. God, this was actually just yesterday. So we made dinner yesterday, and we made tacos. And we were in there, and we were finishing up, and we were 
you know, for my youngest, Talon, we usually get his plate ready because I have a really small kitchen. So getting more than a couple people in there gets, you're just stepping on each other and tripping over each other. So we, um, we try to get the kids' plates ready if we can, if we know exactly what they want. So we got Talon's plate ready. And then we called for my daughter to come down. Now she has pretty bad anxiety, so she really doesn't like to be in the kitchen when there's a lot of other people in there for the reason I, you know, just mentioned. And so she came in and I was asking her, you know, what she wanted or how she wanted her taco and I was going to get it ready for her. And then all of a sudden she's like, oh, I'm feeling kind of dizzy. So I was like, oh, oh no, sweetheart, are you, you know, are you feeling okay? She's like, yeah, yeah, I just, I, just, I just woke up and I'm just feeling a little out of it. So, you know, it's like, okay, well, sit down and... We had all of the taco fixings were on the on the kitchen table, and she's sitting there, and you know I'm about ready to put her taco together, and she's like, "Oh, I'm really just I'm really not feeling well." I was like, "Oh, okay. Do you just want to wait on your taco?" And she says, "Yeah." And I go to turn around to put it in the microwave, and she just slumps over. It just passes out right on my kitchen table. And of course, I go, I instantly have a panic attack because obviously I'm scared. I've never seen, you know, my kids, that something like that happened to my kids. And so, and if you don't know, um, our family is a tad bit different. It's my husband, Adam, me, my three kids, Gavin, Haley, and Talon, uh, my mom, and Gavin, uh, Gavin's best friend, Jesse, we all live together as a family unit. It's just what works well for our family. And so when Haley slumped over onto the table and I panicked, you know, we kind of shook her awake and she kind of came too, but she was really just not, it wasn't, she was out of it. And so I ran and got my mom and she, her room is just right next to the kitchen. You can hear my cats fighting in the background. Just please try to ignore them. It's playtime for them, I guess. <laughs> and so, and the way my house is set up is it's really weird. It's like we have a living room where, you know, or a family room, some people may call it, which is actually my office slash craft room slash YouTube recording area slash whatever it needs to be. And then we have like two dining rooms almost but it's not I don't know it's not that kind of house it's not a fancy house so it's not really that so we had just actually made one of the rooms into my mom's room so it's right next to the kitchen and so I ran and get her and I tell her that Haley had just passed out on the table so of course she comes running in and uh Haley's still just really out of it and I'm in full-blown panic mode so I am useless at this point and I try to leave the area so that I'm not freaking her out by me freaking out. And then once I had calmed down a little bit, you know, I thought she was okay. And that they were just kind of helping her a little bit. But here, each one of them had one of her arms slumped over their shoulder. And they were literally dragging her limp body into the other room. So my mom, it was, it's been really hot, like disgustingly humid and hot. And my mom had her AC going with a fan in front of it so it could blow out into the other rooms to help kind of cool off the other rooms because we don't have, you know, central air or anything like that or ACs all over the house. And, of course, that seeing that just completely freaks me out. So I try to grab the phone to call 911 or call an ambulance. I'm not sure what in other countries what you guys call that if you have 911 or if it's called something different. Basically emergency services is what I called. And uh, you know, she doesn't even realize what's going on or anything like that. And you know, so the ambulance, or first it's always the fire department that shows up first. They're the closest. And then, uh, then the ambulance, like it was just a single woman in like a, 
a truck. She was the supervisor and she just happened to be nearby so she popped in first and then the ambulance showed up and they ended up taking her to the hospital. Of course, after, you know, an exam in home, they decided it was best to take her to the hospital to have her looked at because she's 15 and there's nothing like this has ever happened and she had really low blood pressure. I mean, her, and when we were in the kitchen, I guess I forgot to mention that I was, you know, once she said she wasn't feeling well, I looked at her and everything, her whole entire face was completely white. Her lips were white. She had no color left in her body, so I knew something not so good was about to happen. Uh, when I went to school for my medical administration, you know, we did take, we had to take a few classes. We have to have some understanding of medical stuff. Nothing like a doctor or a nurse by any means, but uh, the basics. Enough to know, and just, you know, in general, you just know when somebody turns pale, it's not good. But she had really low blood pressure, and her heart rate was really low, and, and so... She went by ambulance, and me and my husband followed. Now, my daughter has severe anxiety, uh, not just, um, um, blah. I'm trying to do too many things at once. Not just, like, anxiety, anxiety. She's got, like, severe social anxiety. And anxiety in general, so having... <laughs> There must have been four firefighters, the paramedic supervisor, then we had three paramedics. So it was full, and for her having that high of an anxiety and to still have that low blood pressure and pulse was very abnormal. And so I didn't want to make it worse, you know, like she's not like a touchy-feely kind of person either. So I didn't want to like crowd her or worry her in the, in the ambulance, so I just followed behind, and plus I was still full-on panicking. and. I didn't want to make her think that it, the situation was that much worse than it was, or possibly, I, I wanted her to be as calm as possible, because she still really was coming out of it, and she still had no recollection. She didn't even know she had passed out. That's how out of it she was, and, and so then we sit in the emergency room for, oh goodness, about two and a half, almost three hours. They ran in a bunch of blood work on her. They did an EKG, and then something in her EKG didn't look right, so they sent that over to the pediatric cardiologist, and, and then it, it came back, as many of you may have guessed, that have experienced something like this. Um, she had anemia, and her blood count was very, very low, even, they did a urine test, and they were even finding blood in her urine, and, you know, there was no reason for it to be there. I'll just say that without, you know, having a TMI moment. Uh, so, so they recommended us, you know, trying to get her some iron in her with foods, different foods, and then get a multivitamin with iron, which is really weird. There's not many of them. We ended up ha finding one that was a multivitamin, a women's multivitamin um, capsule. And so we got that for her, and I got her some tuna because that is a good way to, you know, get some iron into you since vitamins aren't immediate. They can take anywhere from two weeks to a month to really fully absorb into your system. So we got her some tuna, and we went and bought her all her favorite fruits, because she's really into fruit salads. We made her a custom little fruit salad, and just did whatever we thought we could do to make her comfortable and happy. And she's feeling much better today. She's still a little weirded out, as you can imagine. That's a big experience for anybody, especially a young young child, 15 years old, who's never had any issues like this before, so, so, yeah, that, you know, and I just, and I know it's not about me at all, and I'm not trying to make it about me, I just, I was so disappointed in myself, 
it really felt like a huge failure because I couldn't even control my anxiety long enough to be strong for her. But it's just, I was so disappointed, and I know you can't control it, but that doesn't mean I can't still be disappointed in myself for not being able to somehow get it under control. And that's part of the reason that I, you know, followed behind in my, um, in the van was so that you know, I could have that moment with my husband to just let it all out and just cry and get it done and let it all out, you know, and so that when we got to the hospital, I could hopefully be the mom she needed me to be in that moment. So thankfully, you know, it did the trick and I was able to come out of it and be there for her. And she was such a trooper though. You know, she just, she didn't show that she was scared. Her anxiety was, she was, you know, didn't get really anxious. I think she was just more scared as you can imagine, like I had said. And so, yeah, we've just been spending a lot of, you know, close time with her and making sure we keep an eye on her and, you know, I, uh, first instinct for them was, you know, drugs, but she never leaves the house without one of us and we're not, we don't do drugs, so there's not drugs in our house, well, as far as I know, <laughs> I mean, anything could be possible, but, you know, there's nothing like that that and, uh, but she had just gotten braces not too long ago, so her entire eating habits have had to change. And so I'm sure a lot of that has something to do with that. Plus, it's been miserably hot, and it's just, it's just not been, you know, that's what I thought it was, dehydration. And so, I'm, I mean, they didn't need to do any fluids or anything. They said her gums had good color and stuff, which must have been their indication that, you know, things were well. My goodness, oh my gosh, I'm just cruising through these. Which is good. And so, this next one is even yellow. <laughs> so that was our, I don't really want to say big adventure, but that was our, our big scare yesterday. You know, and of course I'm still worried just because I don't know, like they want us to see the cardiologist because there was an abnormality, and of course it's just emergency room treatment, so they don't have answers like that. And her blood was, her blood count was really low, her red blood count, so. So tomorrow being Monday or today when you're, you know, when I'm releasing this video, I'm going to call and get her into a regular doctor and get her, see if I can get her in to see this cardiologist. I don't know how easy that's going to be, but, you know, we'll... Hopefully it won't be a couple months out, or maybe just a couple of weeks, I'm hoping. And hopefully everything's okay, but, you know, we got weird heart problems on both sides of our family, so there is always that little slight chance that it could be nothing, but then there's that chance it could be something, so I'm just trying to stay open-minded about it and not freak myself out. Goodness, I'm starting to wonder if there's going to be a part three to this. Maybe, maybe not. I'm, I'm moving pretty quick now. So, on a more positive note, I uh, tried to do my nails and then instantly, you know, they were fine and... Oh, see how messed up they get? They were fine and then I put the clear coat on and then all of a sudden I needed to be a mom and go do mom things. And so... The clear coat totally messed them up. I'm really bummed because I wanted very serene nails today. I've had really dark and mopey nails for a couple weeks now, so I thought it was high time to have, you know, some calm and serene. And these are two of my absolute favorite colors, so it, because they stay calm and serene to me, how many times am I going to look at that to see if it's actually purple? It's dark purple. I couldn't tell if it was dark purple or dark blue because the color right after this is a dark blue. And I made funnel cakes for the first time today. Uh, it was just a, a little kit that we had found that had this weird pouring picture thing. <laughs> 
So we made them, they were a big hit. It was the first time most of us in this house had ever tried them. So they were quite delicious. And I made Arnie Palmers. I love making Arnie Palmers. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's, I don't really know much about it other than I had it one time and somebody told me that's what it was. And then I had seen it in the store that I think he's a golfer. And it's and he had created this and named it after himself or something like that. I don't really know the whole backstory, but uh, it's bas it's just half iced tea and half lemonade, like equal parts. And then you can add you know your own types of flavors to it. And I like to make a variety. Uh, it depends on my mood most days, but I like to make either cherry, strawberry, or raspberry ice because I just use crystallite to. For that type of flavorant. So I brew the tea, which isn't much, it's boiling hot water and then putting tea bags into it. <laughs> so I don't want to act like I'm, you know, this super great cook or anything because I can boil water and add tea bags. And then it's just Kool Aid packet with, you know, following directions on the bag. And then uh, another dark blue. Which you can't really tell much of a difference between the purple and the blue. But, oh well. I can. I can. And so anyway, so I made that. And I made the raspberry ice blend. And it's just like, you can buy the crystal light that can go in the water bottle. Like the single serve packets. Or you can buy a big thing of the kind that where you can make a picture of it. And I just get that. And typically I just use, I don't use the whole packet, but... I actually got a big picture of it made because I had made it in a while so I knew it would be a big hit. I ended up just dumping the whole thing in and it was just super good and it's exactly what everybody needs on this hot day. Lemonade, I don't know what it is, but on hot days I just really crave lemonade. And ever, ever since the first time I was ever introduced to Arnie Palmer's, that is my new summertime favorite drink. And we haven't had it since last summer so... I wanted to make a big old batch of it, and I did, and it was delicious. And so, I'm kind of now on the hunt, and I, I want to ask all of your guys' help for this. Um, I'm on the hunt for really good cold summer salads, like fruit salads or pasta salads or anything that can be cold and kept in the fridge, basically. Um, you can either email them to me if they're really long, or you can put them in the comments, but I mean, you don't have to share, like, family secrets or anything like that. But I am, I'm on the hunt for some really good, uh, summertime, like, dishes, cold dishes that can be kept in the fridge. So we just love that kind of stuff around here, and I make, the only ones I really make are this one fruit salad. Well, my mom makes that one. I haven't tried making it myself yet. And then we make a tuna salad, and that's pretty much it. Sometimes I'll make a veggie pizza, or what is it called? Oh my gosh, you wouldn't know. I've tried making a fruit pizza once, but I don't really like those long-term. Oh, taco dip. Gosh, I don't know why that one was so hard. Oh yeah, and then we had bought a, a spinach dip. I'd like it. A nice homemade recipe for that. I'd really prefer to make it myself. I hate buying store-bought stuff like that. I Only because I really love cooking and I really love making dishes and so, but it, this one actually was really good. It was a Walmart brand. It was the marketplace. All of these are white so I'm letting them dry and I'm just making like, there's quite a few in a row that are like this so I'm just gonna do all the colors and then I'll once I fill the sheet I'll come back and I'll add all the white symbols in. <clears throat> so yeah, I've been kind of scoping out some different recipes and stuff. But I think the best recipes always come from people you know and care about. For some, I don't know what it is. I think maybe because I don't I I was I thought I had something smart and intelligent to add to that and I don't. But I just, I don't know, I like getting recipes from people. I am like a big, huge fan of like potlucks and stuff like that, or recipe exchanges. I just love, love, love stuff like that. 
before we use my writing prompt journal, there's one other thing that I've been really avoiding talking about because it's embarrassing, but I'm not going to be able to avoid it, especially on these close-ups of like my hands and stuff. Eventually somebody's going to notice, and not that I expect people to be jerks about it or anything, but sorry, I had to look at the next color. Uh, I don't expect people to be complete jerks about it, but it, I thought I could, I should just talk to you guys about it before somebody uses it to make fun of me or something. I don't know, it's stupid. That's how stupid it is. Because yeah, I really don't expect that to happen. I mean, we're all mature adults, most of us. But I still get paranoid about it. So, very briefly in a video way back, it was one when, when I was trying out different cameras and it was just horrendous quality. I believe it was an unboxing or finishing the polar bears or something weird like that. But I had briefly mentioned I had a biopsy done on my hand. And that's because I get, I have what is called pustular psoriasis. And if you, if you it's rare, it's a rare disease. And when I tell you more about this, this just goes to show my luck. Like this is my life. <laughs> <clears throat> but it is really rare, and it's usually only found in people with diabetics, usually. Or not people in diabetics, people with diabetes. Good God. Sometimes I just get talking so fast, and I don't think about what I'm actually saying, and I sound kind of moronic. Anyway, so it basically looks like whitehead pimples, and I don't have any that I can show you right now. It's in the healing phase. It's in, It goes in three phases where you'll get like little pimples and typically it's on the palms of your hands and feet on the soles of your feet and the even more rarer version of it is when it attacks the fingertips and the fingernails and that's the form of it I have because I'm so lucky and I think I, the next one is another dark blue <clears throat> So the first phase, like I said, is when you get the pustules and they look like white heads basically and they're just fluid filled bumps. And then the second part, the second phase of it is when, you know, and it's a relatively fast cycle with these. And the second part of it is they like turn into little brown spots on your hand. It's really disturbing looking. And then the final phase is when it peels. And so those little brown spots, just that little area, so like here I'll just like say that was the brown spot. That's about how big they get. And then about this much area around it, it the whole thing, that piece of skin will just peel off. And like the absolute worst part about it is, is the cycles go so fast that, and they re go over the same spot over and over and over and over to the point where it's so raw and so painful because it's just raw, it's raw skin, you know, it's layers and layers of skin and it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper and oh, believe me, I've tried so many creams and like every type of cream and, and on top of that, I happen to get like athlete's foot or whatever on my feet and when I was giving myself a pedicure, I happened to have some of these open sores on my hands and so, so now there's like a fungus growing on parts of my hands and after the biopsy I got some treatment and it's not contagious at all but it is still disgusting looking I can't really eat with my hands or anything like that because I mean why would you want to sometimes the, those sores in, in the first phase can pop open and break and it's so ugh. but anyway uh, not to be super gross so yeah it, it ended up turning into this disgusting, oh, hold on, I had to see which way the arrow pointed, this just disgusting fungal infection on my nails, well, after the biopsy, I started a new round of treatment, and you can, you can take pills for it too, but it's really, really hard on your liver, so they try to avoid that, but after the biopsy, they start, they wanted to treat whatever was worse first, and she wanted to treat the 
psoriasis portion first. And so and then I go back and see her soon. And then we'll hopefully tackle this this fungal infection because it's, it's really weird because it's not on all of my feet or all of my hands. It's only on like a couple of the nails and uh, like two of my toes <laughs> on my feet. But it's like made one of my, like my big toe on this side, like completely curl into a C, like almost curl in half and it's painful. I can't wear closed toed shoes or anything like that. So it's just gross. So hopefully we get that sorted out. And so like I said, the reason I mention it is because I am going through another round of breakouts and occasionally you'll see it around my finger bed, my fingernail bed around in here and it causes my nails to chip off and break like this one because obviously yeah, my nails are actually kind of long right now. Like I said, it's not contagious or anything and it's, but it's, you know, I don't know, it's just it's strange. And for as rare as it is, my sister has a version of it and my mom has a different version of it. So how that will happen, and they've reassured us plenty of times that it is indeed rare and it's not a common thing that happens and we don't really know what the percentage of people who have it is, but I just find it odd. And my sister doesn't even live in the same city as us. She actually lives three hours away and hers is not like severe at all. I think she's only ever had like a couple little tiny sores. And she's just got the psoriasis part. I think, I don't know that for sure. She's just kind of telling me she kind of went through something similar. And it just, it can get embarrassing <clears throat> when you have a really bad breakout. And there's been times where I've had to wear band-aids on almost every finger because it's so raw. And like, I just buy tubes of antibacterial, like ointment, like a ointment, and just <laughs> layer it on with, and sleep with cotton gloves and the whole nine, I mean... You name it, we've done it. And like I said, the medicine, we've tried it all. Other than the pill version, like I said, it, it's really hard on your liver, so they don't really like to do that. I'm really sorry if I completely like gross you out, and now you're going to be always looking at my hands trying to see if you can see it. <laughs> I hope not, because I'll, I probably wouldn't really do a video with close-ups on my hands if... Um, I had a bad breakout, I would try to just do something else, or wear gloves or something, I don't know. I wouldn't, I would try not to completely disgust you with it. Oh, oh, this is an interesting symbol. I've never had to draw this one, so let's see how this goes. Uh, it's a series of little tiny triangles. And like I said, I just mention it in case, you know, because I do have a slight breakout. It's not really bad, but... In case you see something and you're just kind of wondering why my hands look kind of weird or why my skin's peeling. Because my skin will peel really badly. It drives me crazy, especially like, you know, after a shower or whatever. Your, you know, the water will get under your skin if you... Oh, I didn't do very good. But, I mean, it's not... For the most part, it's not... Like, lately, anyway, it's not been a really big deal. Thank goodness, because... It, I, get, I can get kind of self-conscious about it at times. And I'd probably, now that I've shared it with you, I'd probably warn you that, that I have a breakout going on. And I would probably, you know, like I said, keep it covered and try not to, you know, make it gross or whatever. But, you know, it's just a reality of, you know, my life. That's just how it goes. I have a rare form of a common skin disease and I have one of the rarest versions of it. And then... I made it worse somehow. <laughs> I'm serious when I say I would have no luck if it was not for my bad luck. Let me just get these next couple s symbols started and then I'll grab my reading, my writing prompt book and uh, I'll share some writing with you. I've always wanted to write a novel, like a book. Obviously that's what a novel is, Brandy. Good lord. It's actually right up there with having wanted to start my own YouTube channel. Like, some of my goals in life are start a YouTube channel, check, um, write a novel. I'm not really sure. I kind of want to write a mystery. That's my favorite kind, like a suspense mystery or something like that. And then I want to rebuild like a 57 Chevy. I know a little bit about cars, not a ton, but would be a really good way to learn, I guess. 
I've always been fascinated by uh, older cars. I just think they're so cool. I love the way that, you know, things were built back then. And then, uh, I want to design clothes, like, on a big scale. That's one of my other dreams. I have my own fashion line. I think if I just took, you know, a couple classes just to learn some more advanced techniques. I mean, I may know a lot, but you can always learn more. So I think if I just took a few classes, I think I could actually maybe do pretty good. You know, I'm usually not one to toot my own horn too often, but there are some things that I am really good at. And I have a good eye for fashion. I don't always <laughs> dress like, you know, somebody who's into fashion would, but you know, I still, I love it. And then, uh, traveling, obviously, which would come way later in the future. I want to run my own business of some sort. If I can't, you know, do, obviously do the fashion thing. Or, you know, I just always liked, I don't know, I always have these ideas for different businesses. And I should just do something with it someday. And I half asked, started a few, like I attempted to have my own cake decorating business, but, you know, life happened there, and, you know, I was never able to finish, follow through with everything that I had planned for that, but I've always been huge into photography. I want to visit Paris. I want to visit Maine. I want to visit so many places. So, I do have a big dream to travel. So, you know the thing with this um, jelly roll? It is one of the better white gel pens to go over darker colors, but for some reason it doesn't mesh well with these particular markers, so it tends to bleed and fade, but it's, it's okay. If I just would leave it alone and come back to it later, see it does fine over these markers, but these ones that are more wet and dark, it doesn't for some reason. So, let's see where that number leaves me off at. Yeah, there's going to be a part three. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I really thought that I could get through all of this, but, you know, it's kind of like a drill with me. I won't, probably won't do it back to back. I'll probably wait till Wednesday before I do the next round of this, but <clears throat> I'm still enjoying talking to you, and I feel like, you know, you guys have been getting into it with me a little. I just wanted to look to see where I was at next. So I'm going to start a new clip. That's where I'm at next. But I do promise that if in the next two clips here, cause I try to do no more than four clips total for any one video. It's like allows me room to edit out uh, quiet, long, quiet lulls and stuff, but I try not to do more than four clips because that could get really long. But I promise that if we don't get through to putting the actual drills into the containers and I still have more drawing to do, I will just finish that. So then in the third in part, we can that's all we'll do is we'll just start with the drills. And then I can also, you know, show you how my symbols compare to the canvas, which I, when I was setting up to get ready for this, I noticed or, <laughs> that some of my color selections were off. Not by much. Not even enough to irritate me to redo them. They're off because my lighting that I use for filming kind of drowned it out a little. <laughs> that is another white one. Oh my goodness. Alright, so this next one is actually a pale yellow. And I think the yellow I grabbed is way too bright. So... We'll just go with this one. Um, so I really hope that you guys weren't grossed out by my hand story of my my skin disease. But I, I guess I don't just don't know what to say. I apologize if you were, if you felt that was like too much information. I just I thought I should address it before somebody else notices it and gets grossed out, thinking I have like some <laughs> rare contagious disease because it's. Like I said, it's not contagious. I've been reassured by three different doctors that it's not contagious. Uh, anyway, uh, let me draw in this symbol and then I will grab my writing prompt book and I will read you some of the things I wrote. 
because then I can tell a story based on that a little bit better. And this will be a little bit more of a personal get to know me type. Drill with me, get ready to drill with me. So, all right. Yeah, because we're, we're all over the halfway mark as far as the symbols go. And, and is it really getting easier now that I'm thinning out the pile of colors? So again, 300 writing prompts. I'm just going to put that there. And so I'll read it to you. I just want to check the camera to make sure that's not getting in, in our way. And try to move this over more center. So like I said, this... What this book does is it asks a question and it's just supposed to help you write and I just I get into this kind of stuff big time okay so this one and I even roll the dates on them so I'll tell you the dates of them let me just see what I have going on next this is a darker orange so let me just get my next couple of colors lined up so that I can just get right into it and I won't have to put too much thought into it. And what's really nice is there's like six of those in a row. Or three colors, but six squares to be colored. So the question is, what is your favorite way to spend a lazy day? And I wrote this, most of these are all from last year. But I wrote this on August 19th of last year. And I'm just going to color this in, and then I'll read it, what I wrote. This may not be a, the best way to go about this when I'm trying to work on coloring, but hey, we'll give it our best shot, because I can try to do both, right? I try to put it in front of me in a way that I could do both. So I wrote, I kind of wrote this as though I'm explaining it to somebody instead of just answering the question like I treated it as a writing assignment so keep that in mind I wake up late of course yawning and stretching my way out of bed around 11 or 12 now remember this is what is my favorite way to spend a lazy day so this is not an ideal day though summertime it seems like it is a little bit more of my every day than my ideal day but whatever whatever <laughs> so yawning and searching my way out of bed yada 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 around 11 or 12. i go and grab a warm delicious cup of coffee with the standard three spoonfuls of raw sugar addition of cafe mocha creamer and a splash of milk and that is still how i take my coffee and what's funny about that is that Every time I start getting into a creamer or start really liking a creamer, it seems to go off the market. It's happened like the last three times I've liked a creamer, so I was really nervous when I started drinking this one. But anyway, so it's actually kind of cool that I've been drinking it for a year. So, quite particular, but it's, but it's like a fine wine or a refined dance. I know the steps well. I flip on the computer to check my email. And then I drift off into YouTube land to get lost for a while. <laughs> wow. I might wander out to the porch for a while for my favorite pastime of people watching, specifically my flighty neighbor who appears to be a hippie of sorts, and her three boys, a baby just learning to move, a quiet middle child, and her eldest, a crybaby extraordinaire. Oh. I must have been feeling particularly salty on this day when I wrote this. <laughs> and that's all still true, except for the baby walks now. Um, I might make my way upstairs to apply a face of makeup. I do find that quite relaxing, which I don't do that anymore as much. I haven't done that actually in quite some time. I, well, there's no point in the summertime. It's just going to melt right off my face, so... From there, I will continue a rotation of YouTube and having a couple smokes and people watching on the porch. Before I know it, it will be time to pop in a movie or find a show on Hulu and drift off to sleep. Oh, So yeah, there's not much that's changed as far as what, how that goes, except for now it's, instead of watching a rotation, just watching a rotation of YouTube, I'm answering comments 
and catching up with <laughs> my fellow YouTubers and seeing what they're up to for the day and doing a little diamond painting or, um, hold on, one sec. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I was getting the super secret wave of, Mom, I need you. <laughs> Uh, I think I was saying I like now I'm more into like doing some stitching or diamond painting rather than people watching and at that time my neighbor was very new so it was interesting and now it's just annoying because she really is flighty and she really does not pay attention to her children ever sometimes to an unsafe degree like to the point where one day they were she's got like a, a driveway and these are real young kids. All of them are under five. And they're just sitting in this driveway right next to the road, freaking cars out. Like, every car that went by was, like, slowing way down to, like, uh, an idol. And they're just waving, and sh she does nothing. Even I could tell that cars were freaked out. I would have pulled those boys back. What if they just went, you know, all of a sudden just darted into the road because they take off on her all the time and just go <laughs> running off. Or she'll be mowing the lawn and they'll just run right up to her while she's mowing the lawn. And I just I get so scared that one of those poor little boys is just going to get sucked into that lawnmower and lose a foot or something. I know that sounds dramatic, but you, you can't be too careful with little ones. So she is still very flighty. So I don't really find it interesting to people watch on my porch as much. Plus, I used to, right next door, used to be a gas station. And so there's always people coming by, you know, walking to the gas station to get whatever you get at a gas station or a convenience store if you're not sure what a gas station is. So it was always, you'd always see interesting people and they'd always stop and say hello and stuff like that. So then it was quite different to people watch. And there's not so much of that anymore. Because he just, like, one day his employees came walking by and they they were just on a tirade. Because he had just shut down. He didn't tell anybody. He just, like, shut down. And they basically came to work and they no longer had a place to work anymore. And all he did was put a sign on the door saying that he was closed and that he sold the place. Like, oh my god, I could not imagine. I mean... To not even give them any notice. I mean, he had to have known something. So I thought that that, that was the last interesting thing that really happened around this neighborhood in quite some time. So let's just switch to the next page. Um, oh, this is a good one. I like this one. When I read it today, I thought, oh, wow, it is cliche. And you'll see what I mean when I read you the first sentence. Um, let me just peek at what these symbols are. I don't know, see, now, there's quite a few of these symbols that are quite similar and kind of hard to, kind of hard to read. But, so, or not hard to read, oh my gosh. This, they're quite similar and a lot of them are repeating, like, shapes just turn different ways. So hopefully, like... Like example, I just did the, there's the two different arrows facing different ways, and then now this orange one here is the same shape, but the opposite way. So, good thing that they're extremely different colors, because that could get very hairy. Where on earth did my white marker go? My white gel pen, I should say. Where are you? Bosted you. Seriously, do you guys see it? <laughs> like crazy. Oh my gosh, it snuck back here. It tried to get away. So, this one I did, I think it was the very next day. Yeah, August 20th, 2017. It says, What is your favorite work of art? What do you love about it? So, oh no, that's got blue still in it. Stupid blue. 
and I, it is super cliche, and that's actually what I wrote first, so it's kind of funny. Um, I said maybe this is cliche, and maybe I'm biased, and it's 100% expected, but I will always say my kids' drawings are my favorite, my favorite artwork. Uh, one second, let me finish this part. And then I will read what I wrote about each one of my beautiful children and their art. Because they all, my whole family is just a little family of artists. We all like art in different forms. And we've all drawn, like I used to draw a lot more when I was younger than I do now. This is the extent of my drawing these days. So, <laughs> see, and now this one is the same shape, but going this way. Same symbol, I should say. But between this one and my custom, I've never really... <clears throat> this is the most colors I've had. I think the polar bears had a lot of color and colors in them, but the symbols were significantly different. They were mostly like numbers and letters and stuff, which this one is too. There wasn't a lot of repeating of the shapes in different directions. And I don't know yet if this will be a struggle for me or not. I'm hoping that because the colors are so different that they won't be a struggle. Oh, seriously, Brandy, you knew that was going to happen. You know, and I've never referred to myself in the third person as much as I have since I started this channel. I don't normally <laughs> talk to myself in that way. Oh, what? oh my god, that's so ugly now. Let it dry before you try to fix it. So let's, I'll read you the story and then I'll continue. Oh, things are trying to fall. And I think this is the last of like the long ones. Most of them are really short and they won't be so distracting for me to try to, yeah. Let me gather that. Again, I wrote, maybe this is cliche and maybe I'm biased but, and, it, and it is 100% expe expected. But I'll always say my kids' drawings are my favorite artwork. Talon only <clears throat> draws on occasion and his art most certainly tells a story. It is almost always some elaborate backstory for an incredible action sequence, but his favorite thing to draw is pigs, which really shouldn't be too surprising. Healy has skills that far surpass her age. She doesn't categorize her art, but I find it reminiscent of anime or is, I'm not sure how to say this word. I know how to spell it. Manga? Magna? You know, comic book style. Japanese style, even. She once drew me, a <clears throat> and I wrote in quotations, a sketch of our beloved dog Tyrion that I hope to one day have tattooed. That's how good it was. She is incredible, incredibly critical. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to find something more different for this because it's not wanting to stay. She's incredibly critical of her work, as I'm sure most artists are. I hope she keeps up with it, and one day we will see her. See, and one day we'll see in her work what the rest of us see. Pure and total beauty. Gavin doodles most of the time and has a style similar to Haley. He tends to do portraits or headshots more often than not, though he doesn't always, though he doesn't always, his other work is just as beautiful as his faces are. Joy to me is seeing my kids grow in age through their artwork. Aww, how cute. How cute, Mommy. What am I going to do? How am I going to remedy this? To keep it from falling and pushing. Maybe we'll try that. Something like that. So, um, I'll talk a little bit on that while I draw my next symbols. And then we have a good one about my city. Looks like I got red and there's two different red symbols. So I'm just going to do them both. Once more toward the top, but we're getting there. We're getting there because this is now number 11. So we don't... We might actually get to put some drills in for the last uh, little segment. And we won't finish, but we will certainly do a part three and finish because I'd really like to follow this through so you guys can see all of it, you know? Plus, it's just an excuse for me to do these videos. I really like doing them, but I don't really have a work in progress right now. I've been trying to finish up my cross stitch. I'm almost done. I'm working on the back stitching right now, and oh my god, is there ever a lot of it in this. Anyway, off topic. We do this all the time. One was a darker red, one was a brighter red, so I'll put this away and grab the brighter red now. 
my kids, all, like I said, they all draw. Uh, Talon's not really, um, like I said, he's not much of an art. He isn't, it's not his favorite thing to do is to draw, but he, <clears throat> he does put a lot of thought into what he does draw, and they do tell stories, and they are very elaborate. I mean, I just hope he doesn't ever lose that imagination, and he uses that for other creative outlets in the future, which he does. Like, he plays Minecraft a lot, and some of the things he builds, they've just got elaborate you know, stories and uses and just, it's intriguing to listen to him and how his little mind works for things like that. And then Haley is now, um, she's actually started doing digital artwork, which doesn't surprise me at all. She has expressed to me a few times that she would like this to be it a job, but she know it's not something that will necessarily pay the bills. I mean, it could if you get lucky, but even some of the best artists can't make a living off of their artwork, so she kind of wants to do something else. She doesn't necessarily want to go to college for this, which I don't blame her, you know. Uh, it's a lot to put yourself out there like that for very little reward if, you know, you don't get in big. So I told her maybe to try, like, graphic design or something like that. Something that would get her noticed and she could still use her art. And I said, even if you have to do artwork for other people, you could still do artwork for yourself too. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if those were a little, well, those are pretty wet and I can't right color those in yet. What am I thinking? So yeah, like I said, she, um, I, she should have some type of career because or at least keep up with it and maybe do some kind of freelance work on the side with her art, but uh, she's just got so much talent. Someday, I've, I told you guys this once upon a time, that I would try to sneak and find some of her artwork because it's so beautiful. And I'm so proud of it and proud of her for her accomplishments and her art. And I would just love to show, even if I could just find one piece, so you guys could really understand that it's... I'm not totally being biased that other people have seen in her artwork what I see too. Her style is just so gorgeous and it, it's just, it's, it's mind blowing. Oh, I thought those are, the next two are different, but they're quite similar. Yay. Let me find the right pink. That's a little light. It's more magenta. So I think it's this one. Uh, I think this might be a little light, but. Yeah, it is. I don't have the right color out. Maybe this Sharpie is the right color. I think it might be. No, gosh, no. That's a lot more more purple than pink. What on earth? I thought I had the right color. But see, this very much so could be what I'm saying. And actually, this one will work. Uh, it's very much so the lighting droning out the colors. So, Gavin, I don't really see a whole lot. I mean, he still kind of doodles, but he just has such a cool style for drawing faces and, like, almost caricature, caricature style. It's, it's very neat. And I know he does, like, a lot of Sharpie artwork, so I like to get him Sharpies when I can, because he, you know, he'll, like, draw on his shoes and stuff, or drawn as clothes. I stopped fighting that a long time ago. I'm trying to get him to not do that, but he just likes to like make things unique and make things his own. And I guess maybe I should uh, connect with him on that a little bit and ask him if he's still doing artwork. And I'm sure if he is, he's not like as shy or as critical as my daughter. So I'm sure he would be willing to show me if he you know, was doing stuff. And since this is just one and I need to go on to the next page with it, I'm going to um, just fill those in now. Well, what do you know? I just rambled right off of that clip. <laughs> I was going on and on and on about my children. <laughs> I guess I completely 
underestimated my time left because I even finished all these symbols and so I decided that I was initially going to um let's see we're all the way up to seven we only have a few left we're probably not gonna move in because I'm not gonna have that much time and I would really not rather not get halfway through and then stop so we'll finish off these symbols that we have and then um I'll close out the video and then we'll do a part three where it'll be putting all of this together and all of this drawing, what it's been for. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed, you know, this little bit of different type of video from me. So uh, I'm going to check out what colors I need next and it looks like purple. Looks like I have purple and gray left. So purple, light purple. And we'll get all these put away right now. Don't need the orange anymore. Don't need the sharpies anymore. And uh, I don't need yellow. We'll just put the tombos on top. We'll need that. We'll need the grays. I just put that stupid gray away. I don't think we need the blues. Nope, and we just need black. And I might try to replace because I realize that the Sharpies, the, the white goes over the Sharpies so much better. So I want to see if the few purple Sharpies I have look better than the colors I have picked out. And I at least want to read this um, last writing prompt. At least this one. If I can get to another one, that'd be really great. But, oh shoot, that's not quite right for the purple. I need a dark purple and a lavender. So I, I, I can get away with this one. Not this. So, the question is... Give your city or town or region a new name that reflects what type of place it is and explain why you chose that name. Oh, God. Jeez. I'm cruel. I'm cruel to my city. I wrote, because I, I think I may have said it in a video, but now I'm definitely going to say it. I live in a city named Superior, Wisconsin. I think there's like one other superior, maybe a couple more, but I'm in the Wisconsin superior, and uh, oh my god, let me just color this in so that I can read it, because it's white anyway, so it'll be nice to let it dry while I read you this passage. A little context, I guess, while I'm doing this is my city used to be really beautiful, it used to have lots of like shopping and entertainment and it really it's now it's known for gas stations and bars the taxes here are so ridiculous that businesses don't really make it people who move here are shocked by how high the land taxes are it's just they don't do anything try to make the city better to get more businesses in or to get people to move in they don't really like fix up all these dumpy houses or tear them down and allow people to build new ones I mean they just just bar 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 gas station bar 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 gas station like I'm even all the restaurants are basically get like restaurants and bars Ooh, ooh, Arnie Palmer's not very good when it's warm it got warm pretty quickly <sighs> So, I wrote, Superior certainly does not fit Superior, Wisconsin. Inferior, or deterior, is much more suiting. Bars far outnumber every other business. Taxes are so high that few businesses come in, last too long, or even upgrade much. Jobs are quite rare. Even people from Duluth, which is just a five-minute drive over the high bridges, consider a visit to Superior, quote, slumming it, Un 
more poor than rich. It is surprising there isn't more crime. The single best thing is access to Lake Superior and my ancestry. I don't know that I've talked a whole lot about my ancestry. Uh, I think I've mentioned it, but I am Native American. I have, I'm descended from two chiefs. I can't, I don't know much about the other one, but I know a lot about the one because he's from this town. I guess it wasn't really a town then. But this is where, you know, my ancestors came from. Uh, so, the one in particular that I'm talking about, his name is Chief Joseph Osagi. And I am part of the Lakutere Band of Chippewa. And there is this place, when I, I live on Lake Superior, I live literally, like, this whole town is bordered on Lake Superior. If you were to look at the map of the U.S., you would, and you can see the five Great Lakes, and there's Lake Superior, and Lake Superior has this odd shape where it kind of comes, it kind of rounds out, gets fat at the top, and it comes into a point. Well, at that very point is Superior, and there's a piece of land toward the edge of town called um, Wisconsin Point, and my ancestors lived on Wisconsin Point. There's a, like a hiking, biking, act like it's a trail that runs the length of the town. I mean, it's not a super big town, but it's not a super small town either. It's about 35,000 people. And the trail is named after him. It's called the Osagi Trail. And there's a Indian burial ground out there that is like one of the most peaceful places for me on earth so when we move from this town that's going to be the single hardest thing that I have um kind of to compete with or to deal with so I mean I know I can come visit but I don't really have much family left here so I don't know how much of an incentive I'll have and Adam my husband his family isn't from here they're from Minnesota a different part of Minnesota not about an hour drive from here so he doesn't have any anchors here so I just I'm going to miss it immensely when we leave and I hope I can come back to visit being as all my ancestors are buried here and, and like the city did this terrible thing one time where they uprooted the burial site and they relocated it down what's known as the Amnicon River which is in Wisconsin, obviously. And, uh, something happened. I don't know the whole story or all the details. All I do know is that a lot of rains came one day and washed out the new burial site. And artifacts and, uh, not to be graphic, but bodies were uprooted and washed out and were floating down the river. So then they gave it back to us out in Wisconsin Point where it rightfully belonged and I just, I've read so many stories about how great of a person he was and it's quite, it's quite inspiring to, to know that and to know that that's, you know, my ancestry. Ooh. Hold on one second, I gotta, my, I need the top of my painting and it's not being anchored very well. There, now it's anchored better. <clears throat> so yeah, that's, it's like, something that I really like, and I, this town, though, they've started doing a little bit of construction, and they started doing a little bit of work, like repairing, there's two highways that run through this town, and they intersect kind of in the middle of what we call downtown. And they've just started reworking them and redoing them. And that's about as much improvement as this town has ever seen. The taxes haven't changed, and they'll probably actually go up now because of it. I just feel like they've tore down a lot of historical buildings. And, oh, it's just terrible. They finally rebuilt the high school this year, which was a big deal. Like, that was a big, you know, oop. Not a lot of people wanted it. It was probably half and half. 
They didn't want the money wasted going into it. They felt it could have been used other places. And we actually had a middle school here that a president, uh, Coolidge, I don't know much about Coolidge, but stayed in. It was the middle school and he used it as his summer home and they tore it down. I mean, they don't have any care for things like that that, you know, are actually precious in this town. They just do away with them and very little care or concern for what the citizens want. Like, I didn't want them to tear down that school. I mean, they could have done something with it for as much as, you know, the, they tore the school down and turned it into business lots in which one business moved in and the rest of it sits empty. It's like a city block and it just sits empty because it, nobody can afford to build there. The housing is terrible. Most houses are so old and decrepit that then the rents are just not suiting for what is actually here. This town is just a dump. And even going to Duluth, it's a little bit better. They're 80 some thousand. But, you know, that's built on a hill. I mean, and our two towns are considered like sister cities, or <clears throat> it's called, I think I've said it before, it's called the Twin Ports. So it's, you know, one area is what it's considered as an area. But, like I said, Duluth is all hills, and so you're going through breaks really fast, and it's just, you know, jobs. They're starting to be a little bit more for jobs, but they're not well-paying. I mean, some people obviously can get lucky and get good-paying jobs, but for the majority, it's not. And there's a lot more crime over in Duluth. We don't have a lot of crime. We've had a few kind of scary things happen here, murders and stuff, but they get solved relatively quickly because it's such a small town and it's a small little town and everybody knows everybody and so you know, people get big mouths and we've had our fair share of drug problems in this town and it's just, I don't know, it's anytime somebody new comes to this town or I meet somebody new and they've come from somewhere else, I always ask them, I'm like, what, why, <laughs> why would you come here? And that I wrote on the 19th as well. So most of these, like I said, are written around the same time because this was during my camping trip last year. So this last one, I'm gonna look at my time. This last one is kinda, kinda one of those weird ones. So let me just peek at my symbols to see what I gotta draw out. And, uh, this will be the last prompt I write. And then I'll try to come up with some more stories. Maybe I'll talk a little bit more about my family and stuff. And start letting you guys get to know them. Through, you know, through me, I guess. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know how else to really phrase that. It's weird. But just as some different talking points and kind of letting you guys in a little bit more and you guys have been such great supporters and I told my husband I was like oh my it's like you know my little family on YouTube is so amazing that they're starting to really give me quite the ego boost and of course he's quite the jokester so he's like just starting to like, oh you you silly but you guys really do you guys I have, I said it before, I, you know, I suffer from depression and anxiety and you guys really make me feel really good, and it, which is surprising considering you haven't, you've never seen my face and I'm getting there, I'm working up my courage to show you guys, I'm trying to take a cue from Wendy since she's always so inspired by me, <laughs> I wanted to kind of pay it forward and I know it wasn't easy for her to show her face, so I would like to get to that point where I can get comfortable, and I know it's not really necessary for the type of videos that I do, but it might be nice once in a while for you guys to be able to see my face, you know, especially in 
like something like this or um, different. I don't. I guess I don't know. Maybe an unbox. I don't know. I don't know when it would be relevant for you guys to see my face, but you know, I do kind of want to do that to kind of be able to put a face to the name. And I'm gonna draw my last symbol here, and I'll read the story. And I don't think there's going to be much to elaborate on it, so I think it'll be a good way to end our little session here. And like I said, I promise, in the next one, we're that's all we're going to be doing is putting these on the containers and putting the beads in there, and that shouldn't take us more than the entire next session. But there should be enough time that I can show you the comparison of the symbols to the canvas. So, well, let's just hope for that. So you can see how well I did or didn't do. One of the two. So, it says, you are the wind's interpreter. What is it saying? <laughs> so what I did, I, I kind of remember this. I remember just looking up at this. I was camping, so there's plenty of trees around. I remember just looking up and trying to think hard if I were a tree in that type of weather. What would I be saying? <clears throat> Says today, or what, not the trees, what the wind would be saying, but I use the trees as inspiration. It says today I am active. I want to see the trees sway with their leaves twisting about. I want to see the waters ripple and, the, and crash upon the shore. I want to see all the smoke above the campfires dance all around the flames. Hang your damp laundry out on the line and I will dry them quickly and give them a lustful sun, lustful sunshine smell. Open up your windows and I will blow away the stale of yesterday's all too warm air. Stand and let your hair <clears throat> stand and let your hair down to become part of me. Wow. Yeah. Deep. <laughs> I was trying to be poetic. Can you tell? So yeah. Let me uh pause, clean up a little bit, I'll bring the canvas up and we can do a little comparison and I can tell you goodbye for now. And then in the next video, we'll be actually ki completely kidding up Tell Me Stories from Diamond Art Club. And hopefully getting to start working on it. I'm kind of waiting to see what I get in the mail. Because uh, I ain't going to really be doing anything until after um, I get, you know, my contain or get my cross stitch done. So, let's just see where... You know what happens by the time I need to record that video and see if we uh, what we're gonna be doing the drill with me on maybe I'll get my wedding the containers for my wedding photo and we'll be able to we won't hit that one up maybe we could because I I'm just cutting the symbols out on that one but we'll see how much you guys can let me know I'll put a poll in at the very end of this video so you guys can tell me if you want to see me kit up my wedding one or if you'd just rather get to, you know, or if one is enough. And just remember, do not be shy. Be honest with me because it doesn't help me if you just, you know, float my boat and tell me what I want to hear or what you think I want to hear. So, alright, let me uh, pause and get situated here. So we can start at the top, and you can kind of see, well, I mean, that one's going to be easy. And then, you know, there's this one. And then, well, that glare is miserable. There we go. Where did you go? That was a little bit brighter of a purple than I actually picked out, but that's okay. I liked this. I liked mine better. So there's that one, and then, I mean, the hashtag is a hashtag. It looks black, but it, it is dark gray. And then we get into this guy, and the purple, and the pink. Okay. Oops, I went too far. And then we got those guys. And my pink is off, but okay. And then that, and then my series of, like, gray, that's actually, I probably could have went with a different gray. I actually have this color gray, but I just don't know where it is right now. 
in the green and so yeah I mean you can see I don't know that we absolutely need to go through all of them but I'll probably darken these ones some of these ones up these blue ones and <laughs> my canvas doesn't want to cooperate it's like no not for you not today and there's some of those ones I mean Let's see if we can get the rest of it up. Every once in a while, it, you can see the glitters. So then we got this page, and then this one was my mistake one. It's kind of more of a darker teal than I actually ended up doing. And, you know, some of these are just basic, so I'm just kind of trying to go through quick, just to, like that one I s totally screwed up on, but I'll still know what it is, because that number will still be on there with the symbol. And then, you know, just 9x. And then AR, which that was, is more peach, but it didn't translate very well. And then that guy. So, yeah, a lot of repeating symbols. Like the arrows go in every. Oh, let's zoom back out. The arrows go in every direction. There's not as many numbers on this one as. I've seen in other kits, but like this symbol, we have it in every direction. But thankfully the colors are so drastically different that that should help. Typically that would kind of irritate me and it might still we'll see when, you know, I actually get started working on this. But, you know, so that's just my process of drawing. Uh, thank you for listening to me and, you know, thank you for all the kind words that you said in part one. And you guys are really amazing, and you really, you know, make me feel a lot better about decisions I make for my channel that sometimes I'm like, what are you thinking? And I really, really appreciate it. You'll probably never really know how much I fully appreciate that, but I do. I appreciate each and every one of you. And with that, I will let you go. Have an awesome day, friends. I truly love you, and... Have fun diamond painting or making labels for your diamond paintings. Ha 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 ha. I'll see you in the next one. Part three. Okay. Bye.